Hi, this is Lee. I'm here to give you an overview of Google Apps for Education. I'm signed in today to my university account because that is a Google Apps for Education account. And you can see my name is up there, mail, and these nine squares of what we're interested in because that shows the apps that are available. I'm going to start with Blogger. This is the blogging app of Google Apps for Education. And a blog is really useful for yourself to reflect on your work. So it can be an e-portfolio. And it's also useful, useful for students. It can be an e-portfolio. It can be a showcase e-portfolio where you show the best work that the student is doing. Or it can be a learning portfolio where you show progress from one stage to the next. Or it could be used for an accountability portfolio. When you do click on the Blogger app, you get a page that looks kind of like this. This is showing the five different blogs that I run. And if you want to make a brand new blog, you can click on that button there. Once you have a blog, you can start immediately uh, creating new posts just by hitting that pen there. The next app is the calendar app. Pretty straightforward. When you hit the calendar app, this will take you to the month view of the calendar if it's set in your defaults. You can also set up a week or a day view in your calendar. I have it set to month because I can see very clearly my appointments. You can see they're marked in purple and you can change the colour if you want to. Um, if I unclick them, you see they all disappear from the pane. So I click them back on and there are all my appointments. If I want to share um, a, my calendar, I can do in the settings, but also I can look at other calendars. For example, I could look at Mary's calendar, and she has shared hers with me, so it shows up as that teal colour there. If I unclick it, you'll see that that will disappear. The next app is the Classroom app, and if you click on that, you will be taken to any class that you have already set up. For example, this is a practice class that I have. You can see there is a uh, stream highlighted there or underlined, and I can make announcements to the class. I can hand out assignments. If I scroll further down, I can see the class code. And if I want to send it out to my students so that they can come in here at all times, I can send it via their emails or I can automatically enrol them. So that's one way of rolling out day-by-day -day work to your students and presenting the resources in the stream. You can add in a comment, um, if I make a new announcement here, you can see I can write, come to the gym at break, and I could also add in files, or something from the drive or something from YouTube or a link and post it. The next app I have is the contacts. That's very simple. You have your email contacts and this is just one way of accessing those uh, and you can quickly add new contacts just by hitting that button there. After that I have drawings which is one of the apps that you'll be able to find in the Google Drive. Um, doing drawings is very easy. Uh, you title it and away you go. You start drawing. So if we want to do a line, it's as simple as drawing that line from wherever you like, colouring the line. You can try different types of lines. So you could do an elbow type, you could do a curve type, could just do a scribble so I could just go wherever I wanted to just like that uh, I can change the color of it I can change the thickness of it and I can also add in different shapes so instead of drawing a line this time I'm going to oops draw a shape um, you can add in whatever you like I like the clouds there's one that's fill is that tealy coloured so I'm just going to change it to red and perhaps put a black line around the outside it is a black line but I'm going to make it thicker you can see the kinds of things that you can do on drawing and then you can use that in other parts of the Google Apps and you can get students sharing 
one drawing. So collaborating together to make a drawing. So for example, using a mind map. The next step is drive. A drive has two main functions. The first is to store all of your files. You have unlimited storage if you are a Google Apps for Education school. And so you can upload all sorts of different files and just store them there for as long as you like. Now when you're in your drive and you want to upload files, it's as easy as hitting that My Drive button. And you can upload the files direct or the whole folder is full of files if you really need to. Just be uh, putting in a little warning in there, don't upload stuff if you're not going to use it. It's just a waste of time and bandwidth. Um, if you want to make a new file, no problem. You can make all of those different things, docs, sheets, slides, forms, drawings, and all sorts of other apps that you can add later on. And we'll talk about that later, but they give added functionality to your drive. Now I'm still in the drive here, but I just want to show you what your drive files look like when they've been uploaded. Now these ones with the blue um, background and the white lines are all docs, so they're just word processing documents. The ones that look like a little slide, they are the slides, so they're the ones that you use for presentations. If you see something like this, that's um, it's a e-publish, a book that's been uploaded. So you won't be able to view it unless you've got a viewer uh, specifically in Drive. These ones, are the green one is the form and then this other green one with a table looking thing are the responses to that form. So a form is really another word for a survey and the responses go into the spreadsheet. So if we look down here, here's another form. These ones here um, are PowerPoints that haven't been converted. So if you do want to convert, you need to go to your settings, to your upload settings, and make sure that you tick that top one, and make sure that you tick the bottom one as well, so that every time you upload, it will ask you, do you want to convert it? So PowerPoint goes to Slides, and Word documents would go to Google Documents. You don't have to convert it. You can keep it in the format that it's in if you prefer. When you download, you can, let's try this one. Here's a workshop, right click, just go download, and it will come down onto your computer. So from out of the cloud onto the computer, and there it is, and it's turned up as a PowerPoint. And so I can open it in the PowerPoint program. And that works for all of the other files. So the next step is Google Earth. This is really useful if you want to have far away or close up views of the Earth. Uh, it also includes the moon and solar system. When you go to that, you'll be prompted to download either Earth or Earth Pro. If you click on Earth Pro and you can just have a look at the difference between the two. Um, so it gives you some examples of the kind of things you can look at. Um, and also compares the Google Earth with the Google Pro. So at Google Earth, you can get rich geographical content uh, and so on, fly around cities. Google Earth Pro gives you a lot more functionality, but up to you which one you want to explore. So Google Earth, um, great for geography and social studies and talking about earthquakes and things like that. The next app after that is your Gmail. You may have your Gmail set up to go into your Microsoft account, but if not, you can access your mail, your contacts, and your tasks in this particular app. You've got lots of settings that you can adjust, so go over to the settings wheel, click on the settings, and it takes you in behind the um, email, and so you can change things. So labels is a way of filing stuff. The next app is Google Plus. Now this is only for the 13 year olds and over. So don't try and make um, any students belong to Google Plus unless they're 13 at least, otherwise your account will be canceled or their account will be canceled. Um, Hangouts is um, for contacting other people, up to 10 others online and all together um, can join in the conversation. You can also make um, Google Hangouts on air which means that they are saved to YouTube. The next app is the maps. Now the maps are great 
fun to use for students in particular. So I'm going to go into that and just show you. When it first pops up, you will get your, late, your last searches and you'll also get this little icon here, which is my maps. If you click on that, you'll see there are all sorts of maps that I've actually saved. So for example, a digital Mihi map that I've made has got markers on it. And when I click on those markers, I can get some information about each one of those things. So you can take that map and embed it in your site or in your blog. And when people click on the markers, they can see a video or um, slides, uh, photographs that you have and some text. So it's a nice visual way of presenting where you're from and so on. After Maps comes the news. I've just put that app in there so I can quickly access the news from Google. Um, there's no big deal there. It's up to you whether you choose to have it in or not. Um, sites. Sites is something different again. It can be a place where you can share um, all sorts of resources like this one is my particular site and I've got different tabs and I have YouTube tutorials on it so that if you click on that tab you'll see all of those YouTube tutorials all loaded up. I've got digital citizenship pages and just some information like that so you can set it up exactly how you want it. Teachers are using sites as resource hubs for their students so you can have class sites they're also using it to measure themselves against the registered teacher criteria to pro provide evidence and um, I can show you how to use a Google site using a template for that the other thing is that students are making their own sites so they're creating their own knowledge and this is where this is the ultimate in learning isn't it when we want students to create their knowledge themselves so they present some kind of um, visual way of displaying their their knowledge and you can add different pages that can be as private or as public as you like the last two apps that I have are translate if you're wanting to translate from a foreign language this is handy to have and YouTube YouTube is a whole new world if you click on YouTube you will be prompted if you haven't already if you've signed up to create your own channel and the, there are three main things here creating your channel allows you to upload your um, videos from class these three sausages provide you with a wealth of information if it's hidden from you and this upload button helps you upload your videos and also allows you to edit them using the video editor so a very, very cool um, app to have. Once again, it's only for the 13 pluses. So make sure that if you're going to use it in class, that you have a classroom YouTube channel where students can upload the videos to that. So that's the suite of Google Apps for Education. There's a lot more, but um, little steps at a time. This video is quite long enough. If you want to find about, out about any particular one of the apps, then I suggest you use YouTube and you start asking around what other people are doing. Go to the VLN and explore.